The federal government has ordered that the new pump price of petrol is to be sold at 125 naira and it takes effect immediately. However, private fuel marketers are yet to reduce the price, even though retail stations belonging to the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation have started selling at 125 naira per litre. According to a report uh, in a national daily, the private fuel marketers have refused the new price, saying they would be at a loss if they sell at the new rates. Still with me in the studio is Alesta Wilcox, political analyst. Thank you for staying. I'm most grateful to be here. Thank you. And of course, joining us still via telephone is legal practitioner Taiwa Kinlami. Thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you so much for having me again. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, round two. <laughs> we'll be looking at the fuel situation. Uh, the Punch newspaper is reporting um, that marketers are really not happy with the situation. And the question they're asking is, who is going to pay us between the old price and the new price on our old stock? Because they bought the, their old stock at the price that um, was prevailing at the time. How do you react to that? Who did they refund to? When the, when the price went up from 87 uh, Naira to 145 Naira, with the old stock there, who did they refund the money to? You see, this is the criminality and the indiscipline that goes on in this country. And you see, it's time that, um, that Nigerians rise up. It's not a political thing. It's not, it's not Nigerians rise up against those that are really, really oppressing us. And it is not the government now, it is we oppressing ourselves. If prices of the petrol of product goes up, that same day, that same day, there is an adjustment. But when they say price has reduced, they do not tell you, oh, they bought that old stock. Typical of Nigerian situation. As at the time prices went up from one from 87 to 145, that same day, every free station adjusts their pump. Who did they refund the extract profit they made to? And so they don't have a point. And sometimes we Nigerians just take this thing who like, who like and sinker. And the government will, at the end of the day, not take any action. Because maybe some of them, some of those in, in corridors of power have police stations and all whatnot, and they just, they just, they just allow this thing to go. So the, the, the marketers is the big criminality every time. Because look, this is not just, this, this, what is happening now is because the international price of crude came down. That is why you find it, if it goes up, it will still go, it, I mean, they will still adjust it upwards. Now, the government just be responsive so that uh, Nigerians will also have benefit from the reduction in prime price. But okay. telling anybody now that they have old stock, when this is a revolving thing, at the time this will go up again, nobody will, they will not refund the excess profit to anybody. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about... So um, I think that's, that, that's, that means that's a dis, 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 dysfunction in the system. Okay, we'll talk about the inclusiveness in decision-making yeah. at this time. But let's um, look at... Um, Taiwo, let's look at the part where they, they're not uh, shaking. They're insisting and holding... Um, to, as at this moment, we're having this conversation. There's not been any change. Um, my concern is... Won't this sabotage government's effort because they say it is to help revamp the economy or so that we don't slide into a, a recession? That's the layman's understanding, uh, protecting us, uh, so to speak. Uh, won't this sabotage that effort? No, but this is the point. Um, when the, we have to look at the economic and the social perspective to all of this. Thing. The, 20, the 2020 budget was uh, the projection was $57 per barrel, $57 per barrel, per barrel. Now, so at yesterday, the, it has dropped to $25 per barrel, the lowest in 17 years. Now, that has unusual implication on the performance and the fulfillment of the promises and obligations of governments under the 2020 budget. I think government is thinking ahead because the, the fact that we are a monoculture economy only depending largely on crude oil and so and, and byproducts. So because of that, I think government is thinking ahead that the fact that the budget will not perform is going to have unusual impact on the people. So to prevent people's revolt, government went ahead and, and reduced Pump price 
of fuel at to, to one twenty five. Taiwan, I'm actually referring. I'm, I'm now, also now, referring now, now, to. Uh, it's Taiwan. important that we put these things in perspective. Okay. So let me put it in perspective. Okay. So, so, so having said that, now the government decided in in saving its own face and in saving its own head to go ahead and reduce, and it is commendable, highly commendable. But this is the problem: what conversation went on? between the government and the marketer. The conclusion that they are a, they, they a fault, there should have been a parley, a conversation between the marketers and the government before the government comes to this decision. Now, my colleague in the, in the, in the studio said, when it was increased, who did they speak to? You know, it's easier to, it's easier to take profit than to lose money. It's easier to gain money. So understanding human nature and the way this thing works, the government should have had serious parley and conversation with the marketers before announcing that this, this reduction. I, I think that's why it should have been. Okay. The, 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 Meanwhile, there is, okay. this does not exonerate the marketers, but that conversation should have had before now. Okay. Um, there is a meeting um, after the fact. There is supposed to be a meeting probably um, tomorrow um, or maybe it's ongoing at this moment. There wasn't specific time, but they're suggesting that there's going to be a meeting. While we await, um, the, you've already addressed the issue of why there was no stakeholders meeting before that decision is made. Wilkins, I'm going to ask you. This is a time of emergency and unprecedented, um, you know, um, uncertainties um, in the economy and our lives generally. Isn't it within the government's purview at this time to take such decisions to help cushion the effect of what we have now? Of course, I, have, I, have, I, I, um, I mean, when there is emergency, national emergency, you don't begin to hold all the kind of consultation that uh, whoever wants to be held. You know, it, I mean, because emergency does not wait for consultations. You take the actions and then clean up the mess, if there's any. The government, I mean, like I said before, there's, the CBN has just went ahead to make a provision of one trillion uh, Naira uh, stimulus package. Do they need to start waiting, National Assembly and all that? And that's just an emergency. And you discover that oil price was dropping in such a fast mood. Didn't the marketers know? that there must be some consequences because there's a pain template they work on the, that there's, there's a pricing regulatory body called PPE, PAPRA, PPRA, that, go, that modulates prices. I mean, look at prices, I mean, and adjust. So they should know that this is a time of emergency and everybody, all hands must be on deck. I'm even, I mean, I'm even surprised that as, as we speak, the price of diesel that is a deregulated, a deregulated commodity has not even changed. That tells you how wicked and profiteering that the average Nigerian is. When all over the world, prices have gone down, air, flight, air, 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 air ticket have crashed, prices of uh, certain goods all over the world has crashed because of this emergency. But in Nigeria, what do you have? The reverse. Because people always want to take advantage of the, of, of the, of the average Nigerian. And because they felt governance is weak, they cannot do anything, even if they shout, they only shout, and at the end of the day, they have a, their, their way out. That is where we must all stand together as a people. It's not political. It's not because it's a buhari or because it's somebody we don't like or somebody that we felt is not real. But a time of everybody stand to 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 in order to bring about the desired result. Because, like you said, government is looking at the long term. What is the long term implication of this whole thing? There will be loss of jobs. There will be increase. Uh, 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 when the government is not, when the government is having lower revenue, there will be lower productivity in the economy. So there will be, there needs to be stimulus, you know. So if the government is coming up with such drastic measures, which is obvious, because the whole meteorological shows that it's obvious. Yes, I agree there should be consultation, but the consultation should not be at the detriment of the policy that the, or the object that the government want to I mean, want to achieve, and that is for the betterment of the citizen. Why, why shouldn't? People cooperate with the, I mean, with the government to better make up the citizens. It's only when to point the citizens that they cooperate immediately. Okay, uh, let, let, me, let me bring Taiwo in and ask, do you see a compliance? Uh, how can government really enforce compliance? Um, I guess this is dependent on if you actually uh, hold the position that um, government 
can make a decision without necessarily consulting these people in this kind of uh, in this kind of situation. But can someone, they ensure compliance? Okay, someone says when the talk, when the when the things when uh, how do they say it now? When there's no when the time when the time goes off, when the going gets off, the, the gets tough gets going, Abby. Mm -hmm. But somebody now says no. When the going gets tough, the tough seeks collaboration. The world has become a place of collaboration. Brute force, fiat has stopped working. I do not consider reduction of fair price that kind of emergency that requires that kind of fiat without consultation. You know, you need one or two days to make your consultation. The idea of a marketer or the group of marketers hearing in the news, like every other person, that fuel has been reduced is an affront. You know, government overrated power. I see there's something we need to understand in Africa. It is the people that employed government. Governments are employ employees of the people. We fund government. We are the employers of government. Government must defer to us, including the marketers. So this is my thinking. The government has erred in not, in not uh, consulting with the marketers, who are major stakeholders. But what the government needs to do now is to eat the humble pie, you know, less with these people. But government must go ahead with the palliative that, that because it's the responsibility of government to enforce law. So to it enforce still goes policies. to the question so, is, can they so, enforce it? Can they ensure compliance? Because how are you going to enforce it? If you enforce it, then you want to you want to embark on on arrest. You want to embark. It's going to be more difficult. It's going to be a rat race. It is better to 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 judge up instead of world war. So it's, it's important to have conversation. I know government will still have its way. When, and if George John now fails, government can war war. Because at the end of the day, it is a policy that I believe is critical for government and government wants to implement. But government must throw the line of George John of discussing. And if this does not work, then government can embark on enforcement. <laughs> but I need to tell you, it's okay. going to be more costly to enforce than to discuss. You know, right. it, it means you need to set up a tax force that will be going out all the filling stations to see to, to enforcement. Okay, it's going to be very tough. And the people will still be, bear the brunt. I, 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 I hate to keep interrupting, but it will also be done. Yeah, I hate to keep interrupting, but if we can try to compress our responses so we can actually take in more questions quickly. Um, I, I know you don't no, agree, no, but no, I, I, me, I, no, we no, don't no, have no. time. Me, we need no, to look at other issues. Let me issues. just say something on what Let's you said. Let's look at other issues. Let's look. It's his opinion, right? No, no. I just let's want to make some at, correction. That's some correction that let, needs to be let's, made. Let's look at... Let's look at this, the intervention okay. by the CBN uh, trying to pump in palliative um, uh, funds to help yeah. small businesses. In other places, governments are um, you know, making up moves, how they can, those that are freelancers that work on their own, that depend on daily uh, work to feed their families, how do you think this palliative will get to them and benefit them should the situation we're hopeful yeah. that the solution will come soon but should the situation escalate how should government be addressing this well i do not know the contents of the palliative that the cbn is but the cbn has made a lot of uh, uh policy statements first and foremost they reduce uh, interest rate to about five percent from nine percent they didn't consult anybody because that, that's that's the emergency fiat even even in the, in the U.S., the interest rate was due to, minus, to, to 0 0.05, 0.5 percent or something. Just because of this position, the, the president brought out one trillion, a thousand dollar each to every uh, American citizen that is sitting at home. And so these are the times of emergency. Now, I do not know the package or the disbursement measure. I have not read it. I won't come on national television and start saying what I cannot defend. But I know that for them to, at this time, it's time of emergency and there are issues that need to be sorted out. We're not expecting that the average daily um, Okada rider or something will start drawing money from the system. If you don't have a mortgage, if you don't have a loan that you need to service, because some of the loans that they're asking a lot of people to, 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 to grant a moratorium 
on those on some of the loans that you know you must service urgently. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things. But like like, the, like what I said, I wanted to let me just quickly say this. The fuel our our system of PMS in this country is regulated. It's not it's not a democratized something. It's not a, it's, it's a regulated industry. Yes, it's a regulated industry to the to the fact that it is the NMPC that imports that supplies. So this idea of saying. We, you need to discuss with us. Nobody will discuss with them when their price was jacked up by an NPC. Yes, there's a template. But this one that they, they, can they can enforce it by put it by saying, as of tomorrow, change your prices. If you don't change your prices, there'll be sanctioned. And okay. Nigerians should support such things. I'm sure my brother doesn't have a free station. We don't just support such okay. noble moves. And <laughs> you keep that taking people, swipes, people do not. <laughs> Thank you very take much. I'm afraid that's all and, we have and time for. Of, of, uh, but I'll just give Tyro like uh, um, 30 seconds, please. Stick to <coughs> it and make your concluding <coughs> thoughts. So, on this. what is the palliative that you give to me? I'm the one that's going to be fighting and be struggling and be breaking heads to receive the palliative. The government should do the needful. We are facing the issues right now. It shows the government does not have the power. It he thought it hard. That's why we're having this situation. If it is that regulated, it's that simple. Like a child telling, like a father telling a child to kneel down. We wouldn't have had this situation of revolt for the marketers. So the government should eat the humble pie. They have done the right thing, but they should eat the humble, humble pie and begin to have a conversation because to enforce is going to be more expensive. Enlightenment right. is superior to enforcement. Thank you very much, Tyro, for joining us, Marcello Fernandez. And of course, thank Lester, you. thank you very let much. Let the zoo sell us reduce their own price. That is where we should go to. The All one right. that is free, that, 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 is, that is deregulated. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, There's so much. many questions, thank, but thank we're out of much. time. Thank, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank and of course, thank you for staying with us thus far. We'll take a plus report. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Stay with us. While reacting to the recent explosion at the Abule Ado area of Lagos State, which claimed several lives and properties, the Senate has called for measures to avoid the reoccurrence of the incident. The Senate, while reacting to a motion raised by Senator Adiola Solomon, said Nigerians now live in fear as the explosions have become one too many. Lawmakers say they want the federal government to do something urgently to bring a stop to avoidable explosions around the country. Nigeria living around the axis or going about their legitimate endeavor now lives in justif justifiable fears of not losing their lives or those of loved ones from this frequent explosion, fire disaster, but also their properties and investments. Command officers and men of NEMA, LASEMA, Lagos State and, Lagos State and Federal Fire Services, Nigerian Navy, Air Force and other security agencies, NNPC and ordinary Nigerians on their prompt role in putting out this inferno resulting from the explosion and mitigating the spread as well as rescuing victims. This is not about maybe people going to either break the pipeline or they want to, or vendors or they want to scoop uh, uh, petroleum products. This is not. This is purely an accident an accident that has now exposed our preparedness and the level in which we take security uh, concerns as it affects maybe where our pipe passes through. Just like Senator James' manager said, uh, it was an accident one too many. This thing happened, some similar thing happened sometimes in October or so. We took resolutions here and we had very far reaching resolutions. I want to advise the executive side of government that when we take resolutions like this, we take them with all seriousness and they mean a lot to us and they mean a lot to Nigerians. When accidents of this nature happened, all of us on both sides of government must come together to ensure that we address the, the issues so that they don't happen. Now it has happened again, maybe in even uh, larger uh, situation and it's not good for us to be talking about the same thing. The COVID-19 virus is unlike any the world has ever known and work is on. Intense work to find a vaccine. Information says we're close, but we're not there yet. 
Now, while we wait, governments around the globe are doing their best to manage the situation and protect their citizens, and this includes frequent briefing by their leaders. Nigeria's president should do as well. The argument that the Ministry of Health and other government officials have been keeping Nigerians informed pales in comparison to having your president show that he cares enough to talk to you and to reassure you personally that he is leading the charge to do all within his power to keep you safe. He did that when he wanted the votes. Believe it or not, there are millions of Nigerians who still regard President Muhammad Buhari highly and would rather listen to him than any of his ministers. His advisers should cancel him accordingly, especially now we have more cases to contend with. That said, please be reminded that this is beyond politics again. Therefore, all hands must be on deck to support government and health authorities in combating this pandemic. Observe basic hygiene, wash your hand, social distancing, among other recommendations. This too shall pass. Thank you for your time with us tonight. I'll see you again tomorrow.